in Black Raven Valley Base, the Throne of God's Guild had gathered together for a meeting and game. Things had not gone according to plan. As the other beta testers were all preoccupied with leveling up, their call for information had gone unanswered. Leader. The quest hint changed. Jupiter gave a start. Upon checking the quest tab, he discovered that the quest location had actually been updated. It now stated that Zero was inside the western capital. The mission was updated. Jupiter scratched his head. However, while he was confused, he was not upset. It was the twelfth and last day of the beta test, and they had barely made any progress thus far. We'll send members to search the western capital after the official launch. Jupiter clenched his fists. This B-class quest is ours for the taking. In Germinal's headquarters, a report was being read out to the boss. Commander Rosa was last heard from in the western capital. Another man also disappeared along with him. Lu Gao En, our head contact in Storm Eye. Lai Ruo has said that he will find a replacement for him immediately. It's Zero, said the boss abruptly. He silenced Rosa and Lu Gao En in order to keep his exact location a secret. Humph, so you are in the western capital. Star Dragons Division 13 must be keeping him under their protection. Rosa was the ace assassin of the germinal organization, while even Lu Gao En had given the boss a favorable impression. It was a huge loss. That blasted Zero. The boss was furious. Zero, did you think that you would be safe as long as you found protection? While he had at first belittled Han Zio, over time, he had come to recognize the threat that he posed. According to the analysis of the security footage from the Valkyrie Laboratory, Zero had never displayed any unusual behavior. Where he had gotten hold on their intel from remained a complete mystery. Order Storm Eye to pinpoint Zero's location. I don't care if he's hiding within Division 13 Seconds HQ, find him no matter what it takes. The boss voice was filled with murderous intent. Beta test concluded. Countdown to game's launch, 122 days, 1 hour, 23 minutes. Han Zio shook his head upon discovering that the discussion board button had been grayed out. Looks like I was right. The amount of time between version changes in the real world is not synced with my current time. Why are you shaking your head? Asked Gu Huey suddenly. I wonder what other information you possess. Han Zio was currently inside a conference room back at Division 13 Seconds headquarters. There were three big shots seated in front of him. Gu Huey, the division director, as well as the two heads of the intelligence department and the secret ops department. Breaking out of his daze, Han Zio stroked his chin as he evaded the question. My location is now exposed. Germinal might not know exactly where I live but they will definitely send even more killers into the city. Gu Huey furrowed his brows. Although unsatisfied with Han Zio's reply, he followed Han Zio's lead. Then what do you intend to do? There's no more need for hide and seek. I want to participate in the next operation. It's too dangerous, protested a livid Gu Huey. If you show yourself, that will only give them the chance to take action. I can change my appearance. Gu Huey was visibly shocked. You have superpowers. Han Zio shook his head. I can create a gadget that allows me to alter my looks, so there's no way that they will be able to find me. A skin mask? Not a bad idea, thought Gu Huey. However, Han Zio sounded as though he meant something more advanced than a simple skin mask that Division 13 already employed. There were two reasons behind why Han Zio wanted in on the action. The first was, of course, for the experience. The second was that he did not want to remain cooped up inside the western capital. This was the only way that he would be able to participate in more incidents. The Black Raven Valley base was situated near the border of Hesla, one of the Six Nations. It was a major base on a completely different scale from the three sites that Division 13 had taken action on previously. Not only were the security and defenses extremely tight, the commander of the base was a superhuman. He was known as the Sword Phantom, Pan Kwong, a pugilist close to reaching D-level. Near Black Raven Valley was a gathering spot for many wanderers known as Black Raven Village Town. It was a beginner starting zone. Han Zio planned to destroy Black Raven Valley Base as it would prevent a substantial number of new players from joining the germinal organization simply because of the base's proximity. This idea had occurred to him upon discovering the Throne of God's post, after which he had given it some proper thought and became fond of it. It was not only an act of revenge toward the germinal boss, but it was also a preemptive strike that would have unseen but deadly impacts. Han Zio grinned with glee at the prospect. Han Zio left the headquarters to return to the workshop. As it was more likely than not that the operation would be passed, Han Zio also needed to prepare new equipment. The mecha arm and the retractable knife would not allow him to keep up with the level of the opponents they were about to face. Looks like it's time to learn a bunch more stuff. Suddenly, someone knocked the door. 
It was old Lou, with a chicken leg in one hand and beer in the other. Little brat, what are you doing here? I want to borrow a few mechanic knowledge books, replied Hanzio as he turned his attention back to the bookshelf, expecting old Lou to chase him out. To his surprise, he instead said, the key is in the drawer. Just remember to return it when you're done. Hanzio's jaw almost dropped. You actually agree. Since when had they been on such good terms? Old man Lou put down the chicken leg in his mouth and snorted. Treat it as a show of thanks. Thanks. Hanzio frowned. Are you still trying to promote your granddaughter to me? Old Lou's face immediately stiffened. What's so bad about my granddaughter that's stopping you from falling for her? But that wasn't why he wanted to thank Hanzio. Instead, it was because the tall old man had told him that back then. Hanzio had lured the assassin away from the workshop in order to prevent Lu Kayan from getting involved. This alone had changed old Lu's impression of Hanzio considerably. Not bad, kid, praised old Lu with a satisfied smile. He gave Hanzio a pat on the shoulder before leaving him to his own devices. As he left, Hanzio noticed an oily handprint on his shoulder. That old imp. Back in his room, Hanzio took a deep breath as he prepared to learn all of them at once. Do you wish to spend one talent point to learn the energy talent? Large streams of information began to fill up Hanzio's mind, causing him to feel like his head was about to explode. After a short period of recovery, Hanzio gritted his teeth and continued with the other books. Just like that, Hanzio spent 20 of his 21 talent points. Hanzio was currently sitting on 38,000 experience, accumulated from mass-producing incendiary bullets. His daily experience gain was about 2 to 3,000. As for money, that was the least of Hanzio's concerns. He had earned a whopping $3,600,000 thus far. It's time to try and get the disguise blueprint. Before he started, Hanzio invested a few thousand experience to raise to level 3. Talent combination, also known as talent fusing was not only limited to the fusing of two talents. However, the cost for adding additional talents was extremely high. Adding a third would only cost 5,000 experience, but the cost of subsequent ones increased exponentially. A fourth one would cost 40,000 experience. Generally, lower-leveled mechanics would perform talent fusion with only two talents because fusing more was not guaranteed to give better results. However, some blueprints, like the one that Hanzio was aiming for now, could be crafted easily with the correct talents. After playing with the mask a bit more, Hanzio removed it and headed back to headquarters to look for Gu Huey. You've created your mask, asked Gu Huey. Hanzio smiled and put the mask on. As Hanzio did not intend to reveal the mask's transformation capabilities just yet, he had prepared it to display the face of an ordinary-looking young man beforehand. To Gu Huey, it simply looked like an extremely realistic mask. However, while Division 13 could already make such masks, none of them were as realistic as Han Zio's. Furthermore, not only did it seem to be extremely portable, it was clearly very easy to wear. Interested in selling the blueprints to us, Han Zio faked a burst of laughter. It's just a simple mask, why would I need a blueprint to make it? You guys can make them too, right? That's true, thought Gu Huey to himself. Inwardly, Han Zio let out a breath of relief upon seeing Gu Huey give up the idea. I managed to fool him. Then, continued Han Zio, can I join the operation? Gu Huey thought for a moment before nodding. The Hesla Intelligence Service has decided to join us for this operation. You will come along with your team. Han Zio had known that Hesla would agree to taking action. It was the germinal organization, after all. Three days later, the doors to Han Zio's workroom opened. Out came a tired Han Zio with listless eyes and dark bags under his eyes. Han Zio received a call as soon as he turned on his phone. It was Laia Lin, and she did not sound pleased at all. Han Zio, why were you unreachable for the past few days? You have dozens of overdue orders. You'd better not take the cash and run away when I'm putting my own reputation on the line for your business. Also, don't forget that you promised to make a set of specially tailored equipment. Han Zio could barely open his eyes. Ignoring her as she rambled on, he climbed into his bed and curled up under his blanket to fall asleep instantly. When Han Zio finally woke up, the first thing he did was to make his way to the toilet in his dreamlike stupor. After washing his hands, he stretched, yawned, and proceeded to brush his teeth. Afterwards, with eyes still half-closed, Han Zio went over to the kitchen in the main workshop where he pushed Lu Kayan off her seat at the dining table with his butt and helped himself to the remainder of her breakfast, all the while ignoring her feeble protests. When he was done, he simply cast her an unapologetic glance before strolling out as though nothing had happened. Back in his workroom, Hanzio opened up a small box. Inside were the fruits of his labor, what appeared to be numerous thin scales of metal. 
They looked black, but on closer observation, they were actually an extremely deep shade of blue. Although they resembled nothing like armor, these tiny pieces of metal were, without a doubt, the magnetic armor, well, unassembled, and still quite incomplete, to be exact. With the additions of the enhanced facial simulator, Desert Eagle, lightweight mechanical arm, foldable machete, sky swallow gliders, magnetically controlled armor, and last but not least, these flight-capable bombs to his arsenal. Han Zio had finally finished with all his upgrades. Although Division 13 would definitely still provide them with more equipment, at Han Zio's current level, his gear could be said to be semi-godly already. What about me? What about me? You promise to customize some equipment for me. You have to wait till I have some inspiration. As a pugilist, you should focus on using your fists to punch people. Why are you always eyeing my mechanic equipment? Since time is running out, I will have to focus on the most essential modification. Firstly, I will increase the energy capacity. Then, work on the structure will begin to reduce the weight and upgrade the skeleton of the mechanical parts. This will help to improve your overall movement. That will be great. Zhang Wai's face brightened with happiness. The suit was extremely heavy for him. After every use, his whole body would ache badly, worse than after running 10 kilometers. Next, I will modify the sensing system. I will fit a simple chip onto the suit to survey the situation outside, and I will personally donate a firepower control system, which will give your long-range weapons an auto-aiming ability. The total cost will be $360,000. How? How much? Zhang Wei stared at him, his mouth agape in disbelief. His total saving had not even reached a million dollars. Do you think this is too pricey? Are your parents still alive? Why are you asking about them? They have already passed on. Zhang Wei was startled by the strange question. Do you have any siblings? No. I'm their only child. Do you have a wife or a girlfriend? N? No. I'm all alone. Zio Han shook his head with a perplexed expression. Then what's the point in saving so much money? The comment shot right to his heart. Fine, fine, stop talking. I will pay. Zhang Wei gripped his chest in pain. He felt like his heart was being stomped on by a thousand rhinos. It was move out day. The team of four gathered in the garage. The gathering point is the east sentry post. Okay, let's board the truck. Zhang Wei said solemnly. As soon as he gave the instruction, Lai Yulin moved rapidly onto the driver's seat and stared at Zio Han anxiously. Can, can I drive the truck? Zio Han rubbed his eyes. He had been burning the midnight oil for the past few days, so he was sleepy beyond measure. Thus, he did not insist on driving. He told her to drive steadily before moving to the back of the truck. He used a few backpacks as blanket and lay on the floor to sleep. Lai Yulin sighed in relief at once. She felt as if she had just escaped death narrowly. She didn't even have the energy to point out the irony in Zio Han's words drive steadily. West Capital, East Sentry Post, Military Train Station. The superiors highly valued this attack on the base at Dark Crow Valley. Division 13 sent three covert ops teams to take part in this large-scale mission. The first was Zhang Wai's team, and the other was Ma Qingyong's team, the one that saved Zhang Wai's team. The last team was Covert Ops Ace Team, led by the team leader, Dai Su Su. The two ops teams were waiting at the train station, accompanied by an officer from the staff department. A loud engine sound traveled from afar. Everyone could hear the huge horsepower of the incoming vehicle. They felt the floor shaking as the vehicle got closer. Kai Bai Jia looked up at the source of the sound and saw a gigantic and ferocious military truck approaching. Ma King Yong flicked his cigarette butt off and crushed it with his heel. Dai Su Su clenched her fingers tight, gripping the coin in her palm. Kai Bai Jia adjusted his collar. They are here. You have grown prettier since the last time I saw you. Screw off. We are not that close. Wai Yulin frowned and shoved Dai Su Su's annoying hand away. Dai Su Su was not bothered by it. She scanned around and asked curiously, Where is your mechanic? Where is he hiding? Lai Yulin crossed her arms in front of her chest. She gave a cold look and refused to answer. Zhang Wei answered, He's a little tired, so he is still sleeping on the truck. This truck is. Zhang Wei stood upright and said with a face full of pride, Our logistical support vehicle. Jealousy filled Ma King Yang and Dai Su Su's teams. They gave their team leaders a bitter look. We want our own logistical support vehicle, too. Han Zio woke up soon after he felt the vibration of the train. The ceiling of the carriage was installed with lamps that illuminated the room under a soft white light. The carriage was filled with lifeless, ice-cold machines and mechanical weapons, but they actually gave him a sense of security. Han Zio rubbed his eyes forcefully before he got his full concentration back. He opened the carriage door only to realize that he was on a high-speed train that was already on the move. He followed the trail of light and entered the carriage from the front. 
The sound from the wind disappeared the moment he entered the carriage. Noisy chatter filled his ears instead. As soon as Han Zio walked in, everyone stopped talking. Every pair of eyes was fixated on Han Zio. They scanned him with curiosity. Dai Su Su was the first person to stand up. She moved her beautiful waist and moved seductively toward Han Zio. So, you are Han Zio? She asked curiously. I think you've got the wrong person, Han Zio replied nonchalantly. Han Zio knew that he would lose a lot of face if he answered all the questions directed at him truthfully. Everyone's face stiffened. What a blatant lie. Everyone was here in the cabin. Who else could he be? Lai Yalin was instantly delighted as she saw the scheming Dai Su Su getting rejected. She waved at Han Zio. Zio Ji, come here and sit. Han Zio nodded and moved beside Zhang Wai and the others. Lai Yalin whispered to Han Zio, great job. You just embarrassed that scheming Dai Su Su. Scheming. Han Zio was surprised by her description. That's right. Dai Su Su is a scheming, cunning, and sly snake. Lai Yalin said with a mouth full of detest. Kai Bai Jia clapped his hand. Since everyone is here, I will now explain the details of this mission. Field personnel please take your leave. Field personnel knew that this was the rule, so they left this carriage without hesitation. The place immediately quieted, as only the three covert ops teams and Kai Bai Jia were left inside. This is a joint mission between Hesla's intelligence department and us. Hesla's troops are stationed at the border, and they could move out at any moment. Our job here is to infiltrate the enemy base to gather information about their defenses so that we can provide the troops with intelligence support. Hesla has sent us a map of the Dark Crow Valley. This place is easy to hold but hard to attack, and with deep forests, we will not be able to locate the coordinates of the base with our satellites. We have zero information about their troop number and location. We can only attack from land. Everyone was very serious when it came to their mission. Dai Su Su scratched her forehead and frowned. This sounds like a heavily guarded best. Is it possible for Hesla's troops to storm the base on the ground? They refused. Kai Bai Jia shook his head. Everyone understood the reason. As long as Hesla could take down the enemy with two-thirds of their effort, they would never deploy their full strength. Lai Yalin grumbled. Then where is the infiltrating point? Kai Bai Jia pointed at a spot on the map. On the west side of the valley, there is a large town called Crow's Forest. The fact that they have the courage to build a town near a base of the germinal organization suggests that the two parties are colluding. Therefore, there must be a few scouts from the valley base stationed in the town. This is our opportunity to obtain crucial intelligence. And according to intelligence from the higher-ups, there are three noteworthy enemies from the Dark Crow Valley base. Pan Quang, head of the base, 35 years old, Asian, E-plus pugilist, is one of the germinal organization's executive officers. His weapon is a blade, nicknamed Blade Soul. His last recorded feat was three years ago, when he defeated 12 Theseus agents at the border alone. Four of them were superhumans. The page showed an emotionless man. He looked like any ordinary man but gave off an extremely fierce vibe. Jai Jai, deputy head, male, 29 years old, mixed Asian and Caucasian. Limited information. We only know that he seems to be a relative of the leader of the Wind Eye organization. Jai Nuo. Dormund, captain of the security force, 43, from Raylan. He specializes in different firearms, and he is an extremely elite special agent. He used to lead a whole night owl squad. For this combined exercise, Hesla will be sending teams of agents from the intelligence department. They will move with us when we meet at the rendezvous point. Zhang Wai's expression became unnatural and he questioned, agents from two countries working on this mission together. Kai Bai Jia was feeling embarrassed and coughed. Yes, that was just courting trouble. Hesla was unsatisfied with the intel from Star Dragon. Also, they didn't want to expend much of their own force, so they requested that Division 13 deploy manpower for this mission. The agents looked at one another with unease. The relationship between the two countries were rather stale. The agents even seemed hostile toward one another. It seemed like the mission would turn out to be a flop. None of this intel was useful for Han Zio. He yawned and looked out of the window. He squinted after he caught sight of something. He immediately interrupted the discussion and shouted, We are under attack by beasts. Everyone was stunned and could not react. The train vibrated violently, causing the agent to almost fall. At the same time, there was a loud and horrible cry from the field personnel in the back carriage. The covert ops agents, who were trying hard to maintain their footings, peeked out of the windows, and the sight in front of them was shocking. Under the cover of darkness, a gargantuan black worm was coiled up around the last carriage. The worm's body spanned over tens of meters, and it had a glossy, black exoskeleton that was composed of chitin, reflecting the moonlight. 
The creature looked hideous. The head of the worm housed its gigantic mouth, with sharp teeth that continued way down into its throat. The worm was chewing on the metallic exterior of the train carriage, perforating the carriage's exterior. An unfortunate agent ended up in the worm's mouth, and in a brief moment, the screaming ended as the victim turned into minced meat. The bold ideas he previously had vanished instantly. It is the dark earthly worm. One could see the fear on Kai Baijia's face. Zio Han drew his berserk eagle out from the holster and fired a shot at the worm. He tensed up the moment the stats of the worm flashed on the screen before his eyes. The Dark Earthly Worm. Level 48. LV. 10. LV. 10. LV. 10. The Dark Earthly Worm had a long lifespan. Its length increased proportionately with its age. Under normal circumstances, it peacefully resided in darkness with little activity. However, it would be awakened by violent vibrations in the ground. It became clear to the folks that the worm had been woken up by the noise of the passing train. To prevent encounters with wild creatures, every rail line had maintenance personnel who would inspect the infrastructure and survey the traffic, which also included surveying the underground for signs of life. If the worm had come before the last survey, it meant that the personnel in charge had slacked and failed to inspect the ground thoroughly. The agents, who were considered prey by the worm, reacted to the situation with shock by firing their pistols. However, the smaller bullets form the pistol dealt almost zero damage to the worm, whose defense points were way above 100. All the explosives and gatling guns were in the store carriage. However, the agents were unable to obtain these weapons. Their access to the store carriage was blocked by the worm. Move aside. Lai Yalin shouted as she leapt forward with the foldable machete in her hand. She channeled the flames of yellow energy and hacked hard into the worm's exoskeleton. A crack was heard, and a distinct cut appeared on the worm's body. It was useful. Pugilists could channel their internal energy to deal astonishing damage. In this case, the punches and kicks had immense power and worked effectively. After a quick glance, Dai Su Su also went forward. With the foldable machete in her hand, channeling the flames of green energy, she hacked hard and fast, like streaks of lightning. A small piece of exoskeleton fell off the worm, and a faint glow of green could be seen. The worm showed no signs of apprehension. It had its thick flesh and armor for protection and was, therefore, especially calm. It subsequently shrank its body to give the carriage a harder squeeze. The monsters on Aquamarine were ferocious, and many had stacked abilities that made them especially hardy. The worm was evidently a wild boss-level creature, and without the firepower of the modern military, it would be difficult to slaughter the monster. The worm was a creature that required at least 50 players of the same level to defeat. However, there were some instances where the monster was defeated by solo players. In two gulps, another two agents were swallowed by the worm. The flesh of humans tasted much better than that of the sandworms underground. The dark earthly worm ground its teeth as if it had enjoyed the meal. The agents were shivering, and the brutality of the predator caused many to almost collapse to the ground. Use fire, the worm is afraid of fire. Dai Su Su yelled. The worm had poor eyesight and was especially sensitive to heat and sparkles of ember, which had a similar effect on the worm to flash bangs on humans. The agents realized that if the situation remained stagnant for much longer, the train would be destroyed. The only solution was to use flames to push the worm back. Zhang Wei immediately took out the magazine housing the high explosive ammunition. Bang! Instantly, the impregnable exoskeleton of the worm started burning. The worm lost its composure and started wriggling violently. The flames and the temperature made it especially uncomfortable. It became as agitated as a restless baboon. The increasing magnitude of the jolts made him worry about the carriage flipping. Almost all of Division 13 seconds agents had purchased the high explosive rounds, so he was confident that they could handle the situation effectively without him getting involved. The fire started growing on the worm, and in less than a moment's time, the worm could no longer withstand the glaring ember. It gave a shriek and loosened its grip on the carriage. Following that, it tunneled into the ground. In a matter of seconds, it was deep in the ground, leaving only piles of dirt. The agents that managed to escape the wrath of the monster were still feeling shocked and fearful. They collapsed onto the ground. We are saved. We are not dead yet, not dead yet. Mama, I miss you. Although the worm only appeared for a few minutes, the damage it had caused was immense. Three days later, the train arrived at the Hesla border station. Hesla and Star Dragon belonged to the same continent. The more liberal culture on Hesla was perhaps due to the hot and humid climate. Even outside of the beaches, bikini girls and topless guys could be seen walking on the streets. The train pulled into the military train station. Looking through the window, a man in shades wearing a loose-fitting flowery shirt could be seen standing on the platform. He was probably the next point of contact. 
Han Zio alighted from the train together with the rest as Kai Bai Jia led the way. Kai Bai Jia walked up to the man and introduced himself. I am Kai Bai Jia from the Star Dragons Division 13. The man laughed and removed his shades. He had unshaven stubble and looked unkempt, as if he was a fishmonger from the market. I am Yi Fan from the Hesla Intelligence Department. Yi Fan saw the whole studded train carriage and immediately asked, You guys encountered a monster. It was just a small worm, no real threat. Kai Bai Jia gave a dry cough. Despite of the danger caused by the worm, there was no way he would admit that the situation had been greatly perilous. He needed to maintain the reputation of the Star Dragon agents and wanted the folks on Hesla to believe that they were strong. It must have been really fortunate for you guys to arrive safely. Yi Fan laughed. He did not further probe into Kai Bai Jia's words. Yi Fan put his shades back on and said, Let us quickly head to the command center and report in. Zhang Wai, Dai Su Su, and Ma King Yong became really quiet, a stark contrast from their usual chatty behavior. It was their nationalistic sentiments affecting them. Han Zio realized that he should not do anything overboard at that point in time. The commanding officer was a muscular Caucasian man by the name of Colonel Carl. Colonel Carl was studying the operation plan hanging on the wall. Upon hearing the door creak, Colonel Carl, who thought that it was his assistant officer entering the room, blurted out, do not disturb me when I am thinking. Yi Fan coughed and said, Colonel, the agents from Star Dragon are here to submit their report. Take them down to rest, we will set off together in an hour, he ordered. Carl seemed unfriendly to the agents of Division 13. Yi Fan took the agents to a room and asked them to stay put at the location since they would be moving out shortly. After Yi Fan left, the agents were left alone. Lin Yao finally dared to speak and asked softly, Why do I get the feeling that the Hesla soldiers, especially the commanding officer, seem to not like us? Ma King Yong gave a sarcastic grin and said, In the past, there were wars between Star Dragon and Hesla. Therefore, the people of Hesla are unfriendly toward us. It is really frustrating that we have to face such situations even when we are on a collaborative mission with them. I am going out to take a puff. Han Zio stood up and walked out of the room. He lighted his cigarette and took a deep puff, which went all the way down to his lungs, then out of his nostrils in two trails of smoke. He felt a sense of relief. He ignored the unfriendly stares from the Hesla soldiers and diverted his attention to the mission plan on the screen of the tablet. You have activated. Mission brief. This is a small-scale military operation. As a member of Division 13 and participant of the operation, look out for what you can do. Hint, the mission is a part of the Camp Destroyer series and you can claim these rewards upon completion of the mission. Reconnaissance 1, Team Mission. Monitor the situation in Crow's Forest Town. 3000 EXP rewarded. Reconnaissance 2, Team Mission. Monitor the situation in Dark Crow Valley Camp. 8000 EXP rewarded. Logistics Member, Solo Mission. Complete 20 tool repairs for your teammates. 8000 EXP rewarded. Assassination 1, Kill Dormant. Rewards based on contribution. As Han Zio was smoking, a lady with short red hair approached him and asked, Are you from Star Dragon? Staring at her in the eye, Han Zio nodded. I suppose so. Immediately, the lady drew a knife from her waist and stabbed toward the neck of Han Zio. Han Zio stared at the red-haired woman without flinching. The knife was only three centimeters from his main artery when it stopped and turned away, displaying the woman's strong skill wielding her weapon. The woman gave a fierce look. Why aren't you dodging? Why should I dodge? So, you think I do not dare stab you? You can try. Han Zio's face did not change one bit. Somewhere beneath his clothes, the magnetic controlled extendable suit had already inched near his collar. He could protect his neck at a moment's notice, and therefore, he was fearless. Furthermore, since she was able to move freely in the military campsite, she had to be a Hesla agent. She would not really harm him like this. This would most likely be a test of his ability or to instill fear in him. However, how dare they picked him as the target? Han Zio was slightly irritated. His eyes turned ice cold. The red-haired woman suddenly felt a shiver down her back and did not realize where it came from. She had just finished talking when she felt something pushing onto her stomach. She looked down, a large caliber pistol was pointing right at her stomach. Only then did Han Zio laugh and say, Han Zio, that was fast. I didn't even see how he drew his gun. Her pupil constricted. She put away her knife. Han Zio withdrew his gun, too. I will remember that. Winna turned around and left. Han Zio narrowed his eyes. Hesla personnel sure are hostile toward us. They'd better not drag me down. After Winna walked some distance away, she gave a sigh of relief. She realized cold sweat was dripping down her hairline and became serious. That Star Dragon agent gave her an extremely dangerous vibe. Han Zio finished smoking and stepped on the cigarette butt. He walked back into the lounge. 
since it was only a test meant to scare him. He did not want everyone to hear about it. Firstly, it was to protect the mission, and secondly, he didn't think he wanted to be strayed by emotions. Kai Baijia gave Han Zio a complicated look. He was sitting by the window and had seen the whole incident unfold. He had gone on a lot of field missions before, and he knew that the other country's agents would surely test their ability and show off their own prowess. This was a covert rule. All the agents were proud and arrogant. They would not get respect and power without showing off their ability. If anyone were to complain to their superior, they would actually be laughed at. Kai Baijia greatly approved of what Han Zio had done. He did not let Star Dragon's reputation down, and he was glad that Han Zio had kept his mouth shut. Soon, it was time for them to depart. Everyone gathered at the border exit. Yi Fan, together with Winna, brought a dozen agents, armed and ready to go. The first stop of the mission was a position far away from the Crow Valley town. There was an abandoned secret hideout of Hesla's. They would be using it as their temporary base. Division 13 transported the Land Rovers using the train. They were just regular all-terrain cars. Only Han Zio's Big Black was unique. He drove his team off amid loud revving of the engine. This time, he drove steadily and comfortably. Lai Yilin was almost moved to tears. The other three teammates, cramped in the other seats, were puzzled. They didn't understand Lai Yilin's big reaction to all this. It was half a day's ride. Hesla's motorcade was leading, and Division 13 followed. Suddenly, Hesla's motorcade sped up, gradually increasing the distance between the two parties. Dai Su Su and Ma King Yong accelerated when they realized it. Only Han Zio, driving Big Black, followed slowly at the back. Zio Ji, we need to catch up with them, Lin Yao said anxiously. Han Zio's had one hand on the steering wheel while the other one was out of the window and enjoying the wind. Why do we need to catch up? No matter how fast they drive now, they will have to wait for us later. I do not want to waste my petrol, Han Zio replied briefly. Ma King Yong chimed in on the radio. Zhang Wai, this is Hesla's agents showing off. We must not lose to them. Zhang Wai pondered for a few seconds, and he patted on Han Zio's shoulder. Let's catch up with them. Lai Yilin's face immediately turned pale. She grabbed Zhang Wai's sleeve hurriedly and urged, Please don't. This speed is great. What exactly do you fear? Zhang Wai was really puzzled. Captain, is it not good to be alive? Lai Yilin said in a trembling and sobbing tone. Zhang Wai was extremely baffled. Han Zio raised his eyebrow. You really want to pursue them? Yes. Zhang Wai nodded his head. Han Zio sighed and changed the gear with ease. Okay then. You guys had better hold on tight. Lai Yilin was deeply fearful. She held on to the car door as tightly as she could and clenched her jaw. You, you guys will definitely regret this. In the afternoon, everyone arrived at the destination. As soon as they alighted their vehicles, they all looked at the big black truck with shock, horror, and disbelief. Cold chills ran down their spine whenever they thought of the scene from before. Even though they were experienced agents who had seen many things, such as S and Z-shaped movements, this was the first time they had seen an N-shaped movement, and it was faster than anyone else. This could not even be counted as drifting, more like flying. The truck driver must have been heavily under the influence. Zhang Wai, Lin Yao, and Lai Yilin fumbled out of the vehicle, held onto a tree at the side, and started vomiting everything they had inside them. At that moment, they felt like they'd be better off dead. Oh my god, I feel like I'm dying. Blarg, told you that you would regret this. Han Zio strolled down from the car and clamped a cigarette comfortably in his mouth. He smirked and said, well, you guys told me to chase. You, do you specialize in driving bumper cars? Han Zio curled his lips. Bumper cars, don't look down on me. I used to drive mechas. Lambert got out of the car with sturdy steps, as if nothing had happened to him. Han Zio's eyes gleamed. See, there is someone normal enough to enjoy my driving. Just as Lambert opened his mouth to speak, vomit came out like waterfall. Only after everything was vomited out did Lambert commented with a poker face, if you ever touch the steering wheel again, I will just jump out of the car. After everyone moved their equipment into the secret base, they began their pre-mission briefing. We have two operations. Firstly, disguise as wanderers and blend into Dark Crow Forest Town to gather intel. Secondly, search for sentry guards from the germinal organization that are left alone and force information about their base out of them. We will handle the sentries. Your people can go to the Dark Crow Forest Town, Winna immediately stated. Dai Su Su frowned. There would mostly likely be spies hidden in the town. If they attempted to blend in, they might be exposed and be put in dire danger. If so, they would not achieve anything. Searching for sentries would be much safer and easier to accomplish. Hesla just could not wait to throw all the dangerous and tough jobs to Division 13. This attitude annoyed them greatly 
But someone had to do the missions after all. If it was not going to be Hesla then it had to be Division 13. Once the mission plan was finalized, those Division 13 agents who were going in mixed together to form a team with Dai Su Su as the leader. They were disguised in wanderer's clothes and looked travel-worn and weary. They hunched their backs to look as if they were being weighed down by stress. They carried giant backpacks and looked exactly like those real wanderers. They then headed toward the Dark Crow Forest town on foot. The secret base was equipped with many computer screens that were connected to agents' camera and earphones. Han Zio, Lin Yao, and Kai Bai Jia would rotate to monitor the situation. As night fell, the team moved out in different groups and pretended to spend money, probe for intel, and gather information. You guys should go to the southern part of town where you will see a casino. There should be a bald-headed dude who knows the intel about the base. Han Zio was describing the spy from the germinal organization stationed at the town. Those real players who were born at Dark Crow Forest Town could only join the germinal organization through this guy. Everyone was shocked. Dai Su Su frowned. Where did you get this information from? I have my ways. What if the information is incorrect? Dai Su Su was adamant. Listen to him. Kai Bai Jia spoke up for Han Zio. Before the mission, higher-ups had told him to trust his intel. This showed that the higher-ups valued Han Zio highly. Without fail, they found the bald-headed guy, who was the banker of the casino. What should we do now? If we act rashly, we could alarm our enemies. He might have companions from the organization around him, asked Dai Su Su. Han Zio was speechless. We've already found our target. Can't you just be professional and do what you usually do? Dai Su Su felt her chest tighten, enraged by his comment. But at the same time, she realized that she had asked a dumb question. She gathered her teammates to secretly surround the guy. Han Zio looked at the time. He got up and let Lin Yao take over his duty. He did not feel that he needed to supervise the actual execution. If they could not even catch the guy, those agents should just knock themselves out with a piece of tofu. At the same time, Winna and her team of Hesla agents left for their objective after she gave Han Zio a fierce glare. When his team sneaked among the trees silently as if they were hunters searching for prey in the dark forest. There was a series of protocols to follow for the shift changing of the sentry guards in the next few hours. By then, other soldiers would discover the disappearance of the sentry guard who had been killed. However, their first priority was still to gather sufficient intelligence even if that risked revealing their positions, since ultimately, the enemy would realize the impending invasion by the Hesla military. They needed to find out the military strength and defenses at the Dark Crow Valley base. There must be important information hidden in the daily logs. Let me do it. Yifan instructed Magarnu to plug the chip into the computer, which allowed Yifan's computer to also access the server. There was a look of seriousness on Yifan's face, and his fingers started to punch the keyboard and input the codes like a butterfly dancing in the air. Level 1 Firewall, hacked. Level 2 Firewall, hacked. In less than three minutes, all the encrypted documents were decoded. At that point, the enemy technicians realized what was happening and started deleting the documents frantically while Yifan was copying the files. In a brief moment, all the documents were deleted. Yifan's computer was too slow and only managed to copy 28% of the documents. The more confidential documents were deleted first. However, the copied documents contained sufficient intelligence, including defense blueprints, internal structure information, and the military strength of the base. A member of staff from the central control room of the Dark Crow Valley base reported, Sir, our external server was hacked. The assistant director of the military base was Jai Jai. He was a tall, lanky man with a sly appearance. He proceeded calmly to the screen and asked what data was stolen. The daily activity logs, internal structure of the military base, the coordinates of the base, the sentry logs for the base. Even though so much critical information had been stolen by the hackers, there was no sign of panic within the base. Were the hackers actually from Hesla? The bait is set, now we are just waiting for the fish. Jai Jai gave an eerie grin. Jai Jai went into the director's office and reported the situation to Pan Quang. Our external deceptive server was hacked. I presume the hackers to be from Hesla, and they will probably launch a military invasion soon. Pan Quang was polishing his dark, long machete with his handkerchief. The machete had an icy cold blade and a thick body with its handle wrapped with strips of cloth. There were clear spots of dried blood on the cloth. The machete had been used to slay many enemies throughout the years. Pan Quang was fixated on polishing his blade. He then asked calmly, what do you think we should do? Jai Jai cleared his throat and said, although the information stolen by the enemy is false, we have unfortunately revealed the existence of the base. Therefore, I hope that the chief can evacuate the base and bring along all necessary equipment and information. 
In addition, I also recommend that we deal a hard and decisive blow to the existing enemy forces. Okay, just tell me when you need me to fight, Pan Kuang replied. How was last night's operation? Han Zio asked. Lin Yao replied with fatigue. The bald guy revealed the positions of his comrades to us in the forest, and we managed to apprehend them. Also, we discovered the exact location of the Dark Crow Valley base from the captive statements. Fellow agents of Division 13, our guys have successfully obtained critical intelligence of the Dark Crow Valley base. Kai Bai Ji was puzzled. In less than a day, the Hesla agents had managed to complete the mission. Their efficiency seemed too impressive to be true. You guys really secured information about the base. Yifan nodded in affirmation. When it captured an enemy officer, our operation is done, and we are getting our agents back. After which, we will compile the gathered intelligence and pass the critical information to the military. Although it was claimed that the mission was completed, Han Zio's tablet indicated that was not completed. He frowned and then questioned, Can you ensure that the information we obtained is accurate and not fake? Also, can you explain the flow of events to us? Of course, Yu Fan and Winna briefly described the completed operation. Don't you think the mission seemed to be too smooth sailing? Muttered Han Zio. The mission was indeed easy, but there is nothing especially suspicious. Perhaps, it was a result of the enemy letting their guard down. Also, our mission this time was supposed to be a covert assault. I have second thoughts to the reliability of the information obtained. In our line of work, we must not be too trusting, but you must also back your word with evidence. The frustrated Yi Fan frowned even harder and ordered, In any case, we will move out at dawn tomorrow. Looking at the Yi Fan's back as he left, Han Zio's face dimmed. He could confirm with 100% certainty that there was something wrong with the intelligence gathered by Yi Fan. Han Zio started thinking about the events that Yi Fan had described. Although Winna and her fellow agents were a little too brash with their actions, they had not made any critical mistakes. Therefore, the only possibility was that Dark Crow Valley contained hidden traps that outsiders were unaware of. Han Zio unfortunately had no evidence, and even if he voiced his opinions, nobody would believe him. A mere speculation was insufficient to convince anybody. Looks like I have to go and take a look at it myself. Han Zio carried the heavy sniper rifle and trudged through the condensed vegetation. The target was now within the range of the rifle. Lambert's rifle had a silencer that allowed it to fire out a large beam of energy at a sound that was as light as a finger knocking on wood. In this dark and condensed vegetation, a seasoned agent would able to spot the any slight movement within the range of 100 meters. However, Lambert's rifle could be operated from a distance of 800 meters. The target was the enemy's head. The wind was blowing in 8 o'clock direction. Wind speed at 1.3 meters per second with a 43 millimeters in accuracy. All the corrections and modifications were completed. Han Zio pulled the trigger. His body absorbed all the recoil coming from the butt of the rifle, and his hands gripped the rifle to stabilize it. Through the thermosensing scope, Han Zio could see that the bullet had managed to hit the target. The target had instantly lost his head, and blood was spurting out. One after another, the sentry guards were killed, and Han Zio gained 18,000 EXP from the kills. The mission proceeded smoothly. After killing so many sentry guards, reinforcements were bound to arrive. And there they came. If a large number of channels operated by the sentry guards fell silent, it would raise suspicions at the Dark Crow Valley base, which would dispatch quick response teams to the field to investigate the situation in response. The search teams discovered the headless sentry guards. The armed troopers immediately started searching warily, using the torchlights on their machine guns. The tree beside the trench was Han Zio's hiding spot. The spot had been carefully selected by Han Zio. The rays of a torchlight flashed beside the tree. Han Zio gradually lowered his body and held the thin metal wires tightly. He concentrated all the energy in his legs and was preparing to launch himself forward like a mantis. The moment the trooper's foot crossed the tree's body, Han Zio moved his body like a phantom and instantly went behind the sentry guard. Although the enemy had already detected Han Zio's movement and had intended to fire at him and call for help, Han Zio reacted faster and managed to strangle the trooper by coiling the metal cables around the trooper's neck. Han Zio quickly changed into the trooper's uniform. The trooper was a Caucasian of similar height to himself. He then used his finger to tap his forehead to activate the face scanner. A light beam emerged from his forehead and scanned the dead trooper's face. Replicate the scan. Almost immediately, Han Zio's face morphed into that of the trooper. That was the trump card to be used in his successful infiltration. H-223 what happened to your voice? A man that seemed to be his captain spoke. I have a sore throat. After searching the area for a while, Han Zio was recalled. 
more than 20 troopers gathered at the jeep, and Han Zio had not yet raised any suspicions. The captain asked, None of you found anything? No sir, the troopers replied. The captain frowned and said, Get in the car. Let's head back to base. Thirteen sentry guards were killed. Jai Jai frowned in disbelief. Based on his prediction, since the enemy agents had obtained the necessary intelligence, they would not kill any sentry guards, unless they were suspicious of the information they stole. It appeared that these invaders were indeed meticulous and careful with their actions. Jai Jai shook his head and said proudly, but they are still greenhorns. The more nervous he was, the harder it would be for him to infiltrate without being exposed. Han Zhao had many experiences infiltrating enemy bases. Thus, he was very calm and walked as fast as blowing wind, without alarming anyone. He gradually understood more about the base after exploring it for a while. The base was hidden at the hillside, and it was about five to six times larger than the laboratory that he used to stay in. A few armed guards were gathered together and having a discussion. They looked worried. As they saw Han Zio, one of the guards shouted, Hey Mandela, did you guys find anything from the search inside? Mandela was H1223's real name. He was a Caucasian. Han Zio covered his skins fully with his uniform so that the rest would not get suspicious. These few guards seemed to be acquainted with Mandela. The sentry guards outside were all shot in the head by a sniper. We still haven't uncovered the enemy. I bet it was done by the Hesla agents, lied Han Zio while innocently blinking. The guards looked troubled. They were all armed personnel, so if the enemy were to strike, they had to be at the front line to defend the base. I am so jealous of the non-military personnel. They get to evacuate the base first. A muscular-looking guy walked over and shouted, What are you idling here for? Don't you have things to carry? The guards apologized in great trepidation. It was the captain of the base's security team, Dormund, a buff Sharnak. A core member like him would definitely know the secrets about this base. Dormund left after some reprimanding, and Han Zio followed from a distance behind. After turning a few corners, Han Zio was dumbfounded. He barely looked away for two seconds, and Dormund was already missing from his sight. There was no one on the walkway, only a storage room. Han Zio walked over to the room and turned the knob. He was not locked. He pushed the door open and walked inside. The room was about a hundred square meters, and it was filled with miscellaneous items, with no one else inside. There must be a secret door somewhere here. Otherwise, Dormund would not have disappeared so quickly. But Han Zio could not locate the door. What would be behind the secret door? All of a sudden, Han Zio pretended to cough while bending his back. He took this chance to take out the spider from his pocket. He then threw it into the corner silently before leaving the room immediately. He took out his tablet in a spot that was hidden from the surveillance cameras, switched the spider on, and stared at the storage room. It took Han Zio two hours of high-intensity monitoring, during which he started to become quite weary. Before that was some movement in the storage room. One of the walls creaked open, and a secret metal door was shown. Two people, unarmed, walked out. They seemed to be technical staff. There is my secret door. As the two personnel left the room hurriedly, Han Zio followed behind quietly. He suddenly sped up to bump onto the staff from the back. Three of them almost fell. Sorry, sorry, I am really sorry about this. Han Zio apologized as he stabilized the two staff with his hands. They did not make a fuss over it and left. Han Zio turned around to continue following them. However, this time round, he had gotten a white card. It was an access card from the pocket of one of the two staff. He followed the two staff for a while and arrived at the side gate of the base. The two greeted the door guard and left through the gate. You are not allowed to enter or leave the base without a mission. Han Zio took out the access card he had stolen and said, I bumped into those two people just now, and they dropped this card. I want to return it to them before they walk away. The door guard nodded his head before allowing Han Zio to go. He chased them up quickly. The staff turned around as they heard footsteps coming from behind and looked guarded. You dropped your access card. As Han Zio walked near, they realized that he was the colleague that they bumped into in the base beforehand. They let down their guard. One of the duo searched his pockets and exclaimed, Where did I drop the card? Thank you very much. You don't have to thank me. We are all comrades of the Germinal organization, working hard to build a new tomorrow. Han Zio's face instantly turned serious, and he launched his attack all of a sudden. His fist punched hard onto the person's stomach, injuring the internal organs with its sheer force. The person stared with astonishment as his vomited. The other person almost screamed before Han Zio quickly grabbed his neck to choke him. Han Zio took out his foldable machete and rubbed its blade. He was clearly threatening them. He said in an ice-cold voice, I know the two of you know something that the ordinary members are kept in the dark about. You'd better tell me honestly now. 
They gulped in fear and stuttered, We are just low-ranking members who do not know anything. Low-ranking. Han Zio laughed before he moved his knife swiftly toward one man's crotch. Ah. Uh, the person screamed as if his soul was tearing apart, like a pig that was being butchered. But he suddenly realized he was not in pain. He looked down and saw the shiny blade had grazed past his inner thigh and cut into the soil beneath. It was only three centimeters from his genitalia. His crouch could feel the chill from the cold metal blade. I know that is a secret door in the storage room. Tell me everything you know, or I will make you the first eunuch in the germinal organization. Han Zio said in a murderous tone. Although they did not know what a eunuch was, Han Zio's action was quite telling. They were badly shaken up immediately. How? How did you learn about the secret door? I am the one asking questions. Han Zio lifted his machete to brush his genitalia gently, as if he would just lop it off at any moment. He was so frightened that he almost peed his pants and he really peed his pants. Damn, my machete. Reconnaissance 2 completed. You gained 8,000 EXP. Dawn, at the secret base. All the agents were busy packing their equipment as it was time for them to evacuate. Brother Zio, Brother Zio. Where are you? Lin Yao slapped on the door of the truck's container. He looked frustrated. He had been trying to find Han Zio for the past 15 minutes, but his efforts had been futile. The rest of the agents from Division 13 were running out of patience. He is not in the truck. Where could he possibly have gone? Lai Yalin was puzzled. Everyone looked at one another and did not have a single clue. We are going to stay back to wait for his return. Zhang Wai replied. Is there a need to do so? Dai Su Su was rather surprised. Because the truck key is with him. Zhang Wai was gnashing his teeth in great anger, and the vein on his forehead was about to pop at any moment. Everyone was rendered speechless, not sure whether they were lucky or unlucky to have such a member on their team. I thought we agreed to move together. Yi Fan frowned. He went to find Kai Bai Jia to get an answer on this. After which, he came back and explained the reason to the Hesla agents. Who is the agent missing? It was the agent that was wearing the mask. His name is Han Zio. It's him. When his face suddenly tensed up and said, Last night, when we received the intel, Han Zio rejected it without any supporting evidence, and then he was gone for the whole night without leaving a message. This seems quite suspicious. Is it possible that he is a spy? All the Hesla agents startled. Be careful of your words. Yi Fan frowned. He did not buy that deduction, but Han Zio's actions definitely aroused his suspicion. When a and Yi Fan went to report to Colonel Carl immediately, a Division 13 agent was missing for the entire night. Colonel Carl walked back and forth, and his brows furrowed. Is this 100% true? He asked. Winna nodded. He left last night without telling anyone, and it was right after we uncovered the intel about the Dark Crow Valley base. Although it seems suspicious, this does not mean that he is a spy, Yi Fan added. Colonel Carl's eyes turned sharp as he said decisively, then let's attack immediately before anything changes. Yi Fan was hesitant. The Division 13 agents left at the secret base will be in danger if the army attacks now. To achieve our strategic objective, it is reasonable to sacrifice one or two people from Star Dragon. Since they are not from our country, we need not care so much. Colonel Carl did not give it a second thought. The sun was shining brightly above the sky. Han Zio calculated the time and sighed. Crap, I went beyond the stipulated time. I guess all the other agents have already left. He dug out his toolbox and took out his radio equipment to contact Jiang Wai. Hello, hello, Yangtze River, Yangtze River, this is Yellow River, please reply if you can hear me. Zhang Wai's fury could be heard through the earpiece. Where exactly did you go? You were missing for the whole night, and all the other agents left. We could only stay at the base and wait for you. That's right, you'd better make up for this. I want new equipment. Lai Yulin chimed in on the radio channel. One could hear the annoyance in her voice and imagine her pouting. It was actually a little cute. Kai Bai Jia received the radio message at the border army camp. Zhang Wai, what are you calling me for? Is Han Zio back? He asked. He wants to speak with you. He'd better cook up a good explanation for his actions. The two captives had told him that the base was divided into two sectors. The inner sector was hidden deeper in the mountains, where all the important supplies were stored. It was the real core of the base. The higher-ups in the base did not tell the periphery personnel anything about the inner base. So, it was a secret to many of the germinal organization personnel. Kai Bai Jia was dumbfounded. He could not believe that Han Zio's solo act could bear such critical intel. Cough, cough. Even though it was a move well played, I still have to emphasize that it is unacceptable to act on your own without any orders. Hold on for a while. 
I will report this to the commanding officer immediately. One of my team members just discovered some critical information that needs to be reported to you. Ken Zio, yes, Kai Bai Jia nodded, but he did not realize that the other three started having a weird look. Colonel Carl's eyes flickered. Speak, Han Zio repeated what he said before, and at the end, he added, if we attack Brashley, we will only take down an empty shell. I hope we can pause the operation until our guys get hold of the enemy's evacuation time, evacuation route, and the detailed structure of the inner base. Where did you get this intel from? He suddenly asked. I infiltrated the base by disguising my face, and I managed to capture two personnel from the inner base. All of a sudden, Colonel Carl yelled, You are lying. To Colonel Carl, it was impossible for Han Zio to infiltrate, even if he said he could disguise his face. It would take at least tens of minutes to make a legitimate face mask. During that time frame, Han Zio would have faced all kinds of danger. At the same time, he could not predict which enemy he would encounter next, so it was impossible for him to make the face mask beforehand. The function of the facial simulator was his trump card. He would not divulge such information. I have the capability to do so. Han Zio had to give an ambiguous answer. Unless you can demonstrate, there is no way we can believe you. Han Zio's brows furrowed. Do you have any evidence to support your claim? Kai Baijia quickly provided a solution as he trusted Han Zio. I have two captives with me. You can test them with a lie detector to confirm that I am not lying. Colonel Carl squinted. Well then, you can bring them over. Kai Baijia heaved a sigh of relief. Although he was skeptical of how Han Zio had managed to infiltrate the base, he chose to believe that Han Zio had his own ways. Fortunately, he had captives to prove to them that what he said was true. However, after the radio connection was cut off, Colonel Carl told his deputy, order the troops to move out. Our target will be the Dark Crow Valley. Kai Baijia was stunned. It was the complete opposite of what was previously promised. Colonel Carl was reluctant to explain his rationale. It would take Han Zio a few hours to bring the so-called captives in, and if Han Zio was to play tricks and delay further, the enemies from the Dark Crow Valley base might seize the opportunity to evacuate completely before his troops could reach the target. As the commanding officer, he would not simply alter his decision based on certain unverified intel. He was more inclined to trust Yi Fan's intel. It had witnesses, evidence, and originated from reliable sources. Colonel Carl believed that he would not risk any damage for moving out earlier even if Han Zio was right. Han Zio could still bring the captives to him. The only difference was that the base would be on high alert earlier, and that would cause danger to Han Zio's team. But, he didn't care about the lives of a bunch of Star Dragon agents. My men are still stationed near the base. Your rash attack will put them in great danger. Kai Bai Jia was clearly enraged. Such a great opportunity may pass at any moment. We cannot risk a delay because of one or two agents. Carl pressed on an electric bell to summon a section of troopers. They pointed their rifles at Kai Bai Jia. Send our friends from Star Dragon to the vehicles. We will move out together later. I do not want them to communicate with anyone else as that may leak our plan. So remove all of their communication devices. Carl emphasized the word friends to stress his point. After the connection was cut off, Han Zio's face blackened. He had a hunch, Carl was a radical commanding officer, so he would most likely attack in advance. This guy is eager for a quick success. Han Zio was clearly irked. It seemed like he had to complete the mission by himself since time was running out. However, he only knew about the existence of inner base but not the enemy's evacuation route and time. Han Zio forced his mind to focus and used his remaining energy to drag the two captives toward their secret base. He reached it in the afternoon, and his teammates came out to welcome him. Are you all right? Lin Yao quickly came forward to support the exhausted Han Zio. Han Zio shook his head and said, There is not much time left. We need to make two facial masks based on the captives. Lin Yao and Lambert will use their identity cards to infiltrate the inner base. I will explain the details later. Brother Zio. Brother Zio, I have no experience in spying. Can you give the job to another person? Lin Yao's face turned pale due to the overwhelming fear. You are our only hacker, so it has got to be you. Lin Yao looked petrified. I will take the other slot. Lai Yilin volunteered herself. Han Zio peeked at her and shook his head without any hesitation. What are you trying imply? Are you looking down on me? Lai Yilin was infuriated. These things are too big, making them hard to conceal. Han Zio pointed at her breasts. After more than an hour, Lambert and Lin Yao's disguises were completed. They looked exactly like the two captives. Brother Zio, how concrete is this plan? 
Lin Yao asked Han Zio softly. If you dream of its success with sincerity, you will make it. Lin Yao felt a clot of blood stuck in his throat as he was made speechless by that answer. Soon, the two of them arrived at the gate. Lin Yao was so nervous that his jaw was trembling. The security guards checked the access cards, and shortly after, they opened the gate for them. They then walked to the storage room under Han Zio's instruction. They found the access card reader and successfully opened the secret door using the two captives' access cards. A metal pathway appeared before them. The pathway was long. It took them ten minutes to reach the inner base. The defenses were much tighter in the inner base, and many computer screens were seen hung on the walls. All of a sudden, a screeching alarm was heard in the base, and the lights turned red. Lin Yao was scared to death as he thought that they had been discovered. Lambert frowned slightly and held on to Lin Yao. Calm down. The alarm was not triggered by us, he said softly. The personnel in the base were whispering to one another. What is happening? Is the enemy invading us? Jai Jai walked out calmly and updated everyone, be quiet. Hesla's border troops are advancing toward the base. The military personnel in the outer base have already set up the necessary defenses. They will be able to hold our enemy back long enough for us to get ready to evacuate. Lin Yao's expression changed, and he whispered anxiously over the radio, You guys must leave now. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.